Tonight, I would like to mention about our knowledge, what sort of knowledge we gain, how far we can understand things. So according to the Buddha, there are three ways that we gather our knowledge and understanding. Sutramaya, Chintamaya, Bhavanamaya. These are the three ways. Listening those days, so more than 2,500 years ago, they have never mentioned anything about reading, because that system was not common, very, very rare. There are no books for people to read. They learn everything paying attention, listening. Now the disciples of the Buddha were known as Savaka. Sravaka Sangho. Sravaka means listeners. Those who listen to the Buddha, those who are closer to the Buddha, were known as Sravaka Sangha, disciples of the Buddha. So they learned everything. Even they conducted classes without any books. The teacher go on teaching and teaching and teaching, yes. others come and listen and remember. So they would manage to maintain that memory. So the teachings of the Buddha, the forty-five years teaching, all his disciples, Arahantas, maintained for five hundred years without any recorded, written record. And they have taken the responsibilities to memorize group by group, sections by sections, and through oral tradition, reciting and reciting and reciting. The teachers always train his disciples certain sections of his teaching, and another teacher, another section. So they could manage to maintain this for 500 years. So later, they realized the difficulties, and not only that, the writing system also improved. So first time they have decided to record all his teaching, Eighty years before Christ in Sri Lanka, Pali Tripitaka, the basic teachings of the Buddha. Earlier, they never had any written record. So that is why it is mentioned in the Buddha's teaching there are three methods for us to improve our knowledge. Listening. But today we have to add listening and reading also. Listening, reading, discussing, we gain some sort of knowledge. Now you have been listening for the last few years. The knowledge or the belief or understanding you had at the beginning, when you compare with your knowledge you have at this moment, you can see the difference. What sort of development, changes and understanding you had and how many things you had to drop, how many things you had to amend by listening. So definitely you gained this knowledge. Just now Mr. Tan has spoke few words and he has given few quotations 
from Dhammapada and Mangala Sutta and also some other discourses. But many years ago, if he were asked to come and give a talk like this, he won't be able to use such quotation. His knowledge, his understanding is improving. And many others, although they do not come here to talk, they maintain some sort of knowledge and understand. But the trouble is, this knowledge that you maintain is not very accurate. You have some sort of knowledge. The knowledge is changeable from time to time, according to your age, your education, your experience. The belief and the knowledge also go on changing. Changing means developing. Later, you may get entirely different knowledge and understanding. Even in my case, every day I gain some sort of new idea. I improve my knowledge. There is no end to it. And this is the nature of our understanding. Therefore we should not think that we know. If we think like this, it will become a thin else for the development and understanding. Circumstances change our mind, influence our mind, and we may drop or withdraw certain beliefs and ideas that we have. And this is the weakness in our mind. That is why I told you the knowledge that we are maintaining at this moment is not accurate and not lasting and not pure. You have to improve. But when you compare your knowledge with others who they had the chance to listen, to read, to discuss anything about this religion, you can see the difference. The second stage is chintama. Some people can think. Chintama means by thinking. Not only by listening or reading, by thinking. But many people do not know how to think. But they are way of thinking also muddle up and mix up and polluted with so many worldly knowledge. Therefore they cannot get the correct answer. They cannot find out the truth. The main reason is our minds are deluded, misled, polluted, by maintaining wrong concept, wrong belief, wrong idea. But we never think that our beliefs are wrong. That is why we cannot understand the truth. We try to justify many of our beliefs, especially traditional beliefs that we maintain as our culture, our way of life, we try to justify. But one day when we analyze and investigate, we find out there is no significance, there is no real meaning. But at the beginning, we cannot understand it. We are not ready to admit. Some people are intelligent by nature. From their childhood, 
we can understand. But many others cannot understand things properly because they are thinking power, the capacity of their thinking is very, very limited. So they cannot go further. A small children also think. They also decide to them that is the truth. According to their age, their knowledge, their thinking capacity, they have found out certain solution, ideas, judgment to think or to understand that they realize, they understood. But when we compare their way of thinking with their parents and elders, we can see the difference. So this thinking power is going on changing, 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 developing and developing. But the trouble is, when changes take place, there will be a lot of pollution. They develop with wrong concept, wrong belief. That is why they cannot gain or find out the truth. By birth some are intelligent, some are not intelligent at all. The reason is previous experience, how far they have developed their knowledge, how much they have learned during their previous existence, and what they have done, and how they behave, their way of life. All these things contribute when the formation takes place after their previous life. They have another new life. All these ingredients, mental process, in those mental process, their talent, their knowledge, their habits, their likes and dislikes, and hobbies. It is mentioned in Abhidhamma, there are altogether about fifty mentioned, but there are hundreds of them that we maintain as our good habits and bad habits. In religious language we can define them as good karma or wholesome karma and bad karma, unwholesome karma. In between there are some neutral neutral action that we maintain only within this lifetime. These things also become our mental habits that cannot create the effect for the next life. Therefore they are known as neutral karmas. Only wholesome, unwholesome, or good or bad karmas or action generate or condition or contribute when the next life is originated. So our talent and skill and weaknesses and understanding capacity, all these qualities uh, depend on our previous experience. Other is the secret why some people are intelligent, who know how to think, how to understand things very quickly, but many others very dull, dullard. Thinking power is very limited, and the things that they take as matters to things also not very 
accurate, imagination, hallucination. So they do not know how to analyze anything. And they do not know how to penetrate their knowledge to analyze, to understand. They depend on the superficial value. Take for granted that it is true. Another problem is this. By thinking, why it is difficult for us to gain the correct answer? Why it is difficult for us to understand reality, the real nature of the things that we exist? Now this is very important. When we develop our craving and attachment towards anything, it is very difficult for us to understand the reality, real nature of that person or that object. Because our craving completely covers so we use deluded mind to analyze, to understand. But our judgment, our measurement, our understanding is wrong. Then I can give you an example. We you like our teeth, when you go to mirror and laugh and smile, you can see our teeth, oh, very beautiful, shining. We are proud of that. So we have attachment, craving towards our teeth, thinking our teeth are very beautiful. Right? No argument. Although my teeth are not beautiful, <laughs> your teeth are beautiful. Then, so one day, you have a terrible toothache and go to a dentist, he examines and says the root is a spoil, rotten, if you keep this one, you can become septic, so I have to extract. So you say, okay, reluctantly you say, okay, since there is no other choice, so he pull out your, one of your teeth and show you. And on the hand of me, this is. But that is your teeth. You don't like to see. Now you can see this is dirty. This is ugly. There is no beauty. Because now you do not crave for this. Now you have no attachment toward this. Then you can see through proper perspective, reality, real nature of the thing. Ah, that is the truth. So when this truth is in your mouth, you cannot see the real nature of your teeth because you have craving attachment to your teeth. Can you understand? Anything in this world. Take another example. When you take your food, you say very tempting, appetizing, very tasty, nice arrow, wonderful dish, delicious, sweet. After eating and eating and eating, all those valuable, precious things, everything here inside. Then suddenly, woman, please, please, yeah, take it. Can I see? So what happened to the dip? All those beautiful things. After vomiting, you have no craving towards that food. When you hold up at that time, oh beautiful, wonderful, nice. Uh, this is one of the advice given by the Buddha. Ahare patikulatanya, one of the objects for meditation. If you really want to meditate, after eating you must vomit. Vomit and meditate. 
and then you get the understanding. You try and see. While you are eating, you cannot meditate because you crave for this food. And this is the need. So as long as we maintain either attachment or craving or some sort of inclination toward anything in this world, we never realize the reality or the real nature of that object. So the knowledge that we gain by listening and reading and thinking, no doubt, we could manage to understand various aspects, gain better knowledge, but knowledge is not accurate. As still there are so many dark corners in our knowledge, and that knowledge is changeable. Circumstances can change that knowledge. Temptation can change that knowledge. Irritation, disturbances can change that knowledge. You can say, you have wonderful knowledge about the Buddha or Buddhism or the Dharma, the teachings of the Buddha. Your knowledge is very advanced. I have seen many people after gaining such knowledge, when little bit of disturbances, anger appeared in their mind, they throw away their knowledge and understanding about the Buddha and the Dhamma and Buddhism, when embrace another religion to take revenge. There are many. Can you imagine what they have learned for 40, 50, 60 years, wonderful knowledge, because of misunderstanding, if not anger, to take revenge. Uh, Buddhists are like this, we don't like. We cannot blame a religion by observing the people who follow this religion. Remember. We cannot say Buddhism is bad just because Buddhists are bad people. We cannot say Christians are bad, but the Christianity is bad just because some Christians are bad. So we must never measure the value of a religion by observing what those followers, because they have their own weakness. They have their own human nature. They have their own emotional feelings. But religion is another thing. Ah, here what I wanted to tell you. Now you gain this knowledge. You will continue learning and learning and reading and reading. One day, when you get some sort, create some sort of misunderstanding, with me, or with one of our committee members, or the devotees here in the temple, you can say, I don't want Buddhism. I want to become a Muslim or Christian. There are people. Ah, this is the uncertainty, my dear friend, in your knowledge. So that knowledge is not penetrated. It is artificial. A still artificial. Superficial knowledge. You can refer to every word of the Buddha that he preached for 45 years. You can talk about Sutra, Vinaya, and Abhidhamma and meditation. As still those human weaknesses are in your mind. You can change your mind at any time. That is why I told you. The knowledge that you gain by listening and reading and discussing, yes, you can develop but not accurate. The knowledge that you gain by thinking and concentrating and analyzing, 
far better than the knowledge that you had simply by listening and reading. By listening and reading, you gain some idea. But these ideas you keep in your mind as truth. That is not enough. When you analyze, investigate, think, after thinking and thinking and thinking, you may get better understanding. Even then, that understanding also not clear, not accurate. You have to go first. So don't think that you understood. Now we can say, when we explain the word avidya, ignorance, I always say you are ignorant. And some people get angry with me. We are intelligent people. We are educated people. Reverend says we are ignorant. <laughs> but they cannot understand the real meaning of this word ignorant. Why we are ignorant? Let me repeat. To avoid misunderstanding. Why I say you are ignorant? You do not know why you are here in this world. Do you know? then how can you say you are not ignorant? Because of your ignorance, you cannot understand why you are here. You do not know why you cannot satisfy with your life although you have everything. Do you know the reason? You do not know. Because you are ignorant. Do you know what will happen to you after your death? Everybody wants to go to heaven to pay mahjong, <laughs> but they create daydreams. Do you know what will happen to you after your death? You create imagination, but in reality, actually, you do not know what will happen because of your ignorance. The meaning of this word Buddha, Sabbanyata Jnana, all-knowing knowledge, all-knowing one. What does it mean? Realizations of these four noble truths. Nothing but these four noble truths. You can see, we also can remember suffering, cause of suffering, end of suffering, and path leading to the cessation of suffering. We also can understand. Then what is the difference between the Buddha and others? Uh, that is knowledge. You have that knowledge, but no understanding, no realization. If that realization is there, you never behave like this. You never talk like this. And you never get angry. You never show your temper. You never become greedy, never become selfish. Never discriminate others. But how many of are maintaining these qualities, those who say that they know, they also can understand the Four Noble Truths. So the realizations of Four Noble Truths realize why this life comes into existence. We do not know. Therefore we are ignorant. No realization. And what is the cause? What is the main reason for us to appear like this in this world? Who is responsible for this? Who is created by a God? Why it is necessary to create for us to suffer like this? If God keep quiet, there is nobody to suffer here in this world. We are all suffering here because of there is someone to create us to suffer for nothing. And people believe this. But 
Realization means we come to know why we are here and what is the cause of it. By realizing this, then we develop our knowledge to stop that main cause which creates problems and troubles and sufferings and disappointments. Now we do not know. When the sufferings and troubles and problems and sicknesses are there, what we say? Charm. Even just now also, one family came and told me, somebody's charm. Then uh, how do you know whether the charms are not? This is the need that is called ignorance. For everything we blame charm. Real ignorance. Because we cannot understand the cause, the reason why these problems and troubles and difficulties, sicknesses arise. For everything there is a cause. So when a person understood all these things, ah, then that person become a Buddha. When we analyze four noble truth, all these things are there. So unless and until we develop our mind up to that extent, whatever knowledge we gain, it is not accurate. And the most dangerous thing is that knowledge is changing. Our emotion, our craving, our anger can forget this knowledge. Again, entirely different concept, different ideas, different belief they start to develop. And then the last method for us to gain knowledge is bhavana maya. The knowledge and understanding that we gain through bhavana, meditation. When we develop this, through this development we gain a realization. And that realization is unchangeable. But at the initial stage, through their meditation, through dhyana samatha meditation, the knowledge, the purity, the supernatural powers, supernormal powers that they gain through the psychic power, mental development. All these knowledge and supernatural powers and psychic powers that they have developed through their meditation are also uncertain. The same mind can abuse, can misuse the knowledge the supernormal power or psychic power that they gain through their meditation because they have not eradicated the main roots of three evil forces in the mind. They develop their psychic power through their meditation they gain their supernatural power, they gain their knowledge and understanding by keeping the germs of three main evil roots in the mind. Therefore, their minds are also subject to change. Temptation or craving can change the mind. Then what will happen? When those hidden evil forces arouse, flare up, 
all the powers, knowledge, supernatural power, everything dropped. No more. Now you can understand what happened to Devadatta, the Buddha's disciple, who developed this meditation, got jhanic power and development, supernormal power to appear and disappear, to transform himself to take any form, either humans or animals or ghosts or devils, but he has developed this jhanic power, this meditation, without eradicating three main roots of evil, lobha, dosa, mo, lobha, akusala, mula, dosa, akusala, mula, moho, akusala, mula, in Abhidhamma, the Buddha says. Craving is the main cause, root, of all akusala karma, all bad karma. Doso akusala mulam, our hatred or ill will, is the main cause of all these akusala karma. Moho akusala mulam, our illusions or ignorance, is the main cause of all our akusala karma or bad karma. We can suppress, we can control, we can keep them under control, but the root, the seed, remains in the mind. So those who meditate, who gain these so-called powers and supernatural powers, they can perform certain things which normal people cannot do. And many people regard them as arahantas because people cannot understand things. But circumstances can change their mind again. They can become worldly people again. Not only that. Let us take the Buddha. This is a very good example. When he was a small boy, Prince Siddhartha, you know, when the father was having a festival in the paddy field, King Suddhoda, he carried this baby also, and this baby was playing under a tree. Uh, all the others are working in the paddy field at the festival. This small child, because of his previous experience, he developed this meditation, jhana, he got into jhanic state and start to going up and up and up just like a bird. This small baby and the father, King Suddhodana came and worshipped, saying, this is my second worship. A small baby who could perform this kind of miracle through his meditation, psychic power, later, as Prince Siddhartha, he led a worldly life, he married, he had a baby, and he enjoyed worldly life, but he had not done anything against religion, but he led a worldly life, one who performed miracles through his jhanic psychic power. Later, he renounced. After this renunciation, he wanted to follow many of those religious teachers. I clearly show his ignorance. To follow all these religious teachers, as ignorance still active in the mind, one who could perform miracle even as a, a small baby, one who worked such a long period, life after life, to gain enlightenment, as still could not eradicate completely reducing and reducing and reducing and reducing. But again they flare up. So he has done silly things. 
how he suffered for six years to gain enlightenment. He believed all those religious teachers advised him to do. He could not gain anything. Then he had to use his thinking power. After thinking and thinking, he knew I have suffered more than enough. Through this suffering, I cannot gain anything. I know I never gain enlightenment by torturing and suffering. Decided to give up. He changed his mind. After changing his mind, I mean, he decided to get into middle path. What is middle path? Lead a normal life. Without indulging, without enjoying too much, without becoming slaves to senses and pleasure, and taking natural food, leading a normal life, without torturing physical body. So, by leading this way of moderate way of life, and through his previous experience, what he has cultivated life after life, only a little bit ignorance disturbed, hindered for gaining enlightenment. Uh, in the end, he got it, enlightenment. Now here, a teacher who has developed, cultivated, trained his mind, life after life, by reducing, cultivating his mind, also, even at the final birth, he was born to be a Buddha, also had to face these disturbances, mental disturbances, hindrances. What about our mind? Changes can take place at any time. So this truth or reality that we are trying to gain through meditation is bhavana maya panya, understanding. This panya directly refers to vipassana. Through samatha, we can train and train and train and train, culture our mind. And we can calm our mind. Our mind is very obedient, can tolerate anything, lot of patience and kindness and compassion, all the good quality you can find in that mind. And that mind is not stubborn. All the good qualities are there. But the real wisdom is not there. The real wisdom given through vipassana, anicca, dukkha, anapta, these three characteristics. Why it is difficult? for us to gain this panya or knowledge or wisdom that which never change because life after life, as I mentioned earlier, we have accumulated, collected so much mental impurities in our mind. It is very difficult for us to Please wipe out all those dirt we have accumulated. So through Samatha meditation, we try to cleanse all this rubbish, but not hundred percent. So in the end, when you shift over or change into vipassana to get that develop insight to wipe out the dark clouds from the mind or misconception 
especially misconception. Those who have developed their mind to samadha meditation also maintain misconception. Although their minds are very calm and pure, but still they have some misconception. By using this vipassana, anicca, dukkha, anat, then the realization that is. The nature of this life, the nature of this world, nature of anything that we exist, we analyze. Universal characteristic common to everything, animate or inanimate, anicca, dukkha, anatta, meaning we can see Everything is going on, changing, 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 decaying, 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 decaying. Yes, we can see, but we never realize what is the cause of this. When changes take place, what we do? We worry. We complain, we grumble, we cry. Uh, this is the only thing we are doing. Or we fight with others. But we never try to understand why these changes take place. If we can analyze, then we stop our fighting, we stop our crying, we stop our grumbling. Because we know Yankinchi samudaya dhamma sabdantan nirod dhamma. Here the Buddha say. Remember this say. Not necessary to remember the Pali word. Yankinchi samudaya dhamma. If there is anything that which come into existence, samudaya, exist. Sabbantan, everything is subject to this. What is this? Change, decay, disappear. Analyze. Then you can stop your worrying, your grumbling, your accusation, your fighting. Even the person who preached this, who taught us like this, and his body also subject to the same, changing, decaying, disappearing. The Buddha's body also. Then what about others? And other things, all those things that exist. And then we analyze. Dukkha. Yes. Even plant life also experience Dukkha. Not only us. Not only living being. Dukkha means friction, conflicts, clashes. When frictions and conflicts take place, are ah, then disturbances. These disturbances we take as suffering. When the elements and elements friction. Conflicts take place in this body, we experience uneasiness, pain. That is called suffering. But that is the nature of this existence. No one is free from that. Then why should we grumble? Why should we cry? To whom are you going to blame? Anything. This one also. Just now this one dropped. See? There is no life. Breakable. Sabbang bhedana pariyantang evang machana jivitam. Another saying of the Buddha. Sabbang bhedana pariyantang. Everything that which exists is breakable. Bhedana pariyantang breakable. Evang machana jivitam. 
So our life, our body also like this. Breakable. So not unbreakable. By gaining this knowledge, we can console our mind. We can reduce our worries and anger and suspicion. We can reduce our suspicion about charms. For everything we think charms and charms, there is no charm there. This is the nature. So look at this agreement. You commit this agreement or unsatisfactoriness in anything. Whatever we gain, after some times we get fed up. Unsatisfactoriness. After gaining something, we want to change it to something else. Unsatisfactoriness. Throughout our life we are going on changing, changing, but no satisfaction. No gain satisfaction. And this is the nature. And no one can go against this. And this understanding. Then, last one, Anatta. It is due to our ignorance, craving. We believe that there is something, some sort of entity, substance, to remain after our death. Everlasting. Craving create this belief. To console, to satisfy our craving, we maintain this belief, we pray, we worship, we hope. After our death, we want something eternal to remain without changes, without decaying, without dying. It is impossible. But we don't like it. Why we don't like it? Because our craving never happy about this. Our craving says, no, we want something. And that is ignorance. So as long as you maintain this ignorance, you nurture, you entertain your craving by creating such concepts, such belief, thinking there is a place for you to go and remain forever. So when we drop this belief, then anatta, anitya dukkha anatta, realizations of these three characteristics, then the knowledge, the wisdom, realization that we gain is the final solution. Uh, these are the three methods. By listening, reading, discussing, we gain knowledge, but not accurate. After that we go on thinking, analyzing, investigating, we get better knowledge, but still not accurate and not what you call lasting, but uncertain, changeable. The knowledge we gain, through samatha meditation, we maintain, we gain a lot of good qualities, virtues, development in our mind. But still, the mental attitude is not accurate. Little bit of dark cloud still moving around the mind. Then we analyze according to three characteristics anicca, dukkha, anatta. Impermanency, unsatisfactoriness, unsubstantiality. That means there is nothing to remain as an entity without changing. This is the nature of existence. And then wisdom is gained and the final goal the aim of our life also achieved. Because aim is to gain this reality by removing our ignorance and illusion. Now we are hanging on 
ignorance, illusion, maya. Hindu philosophy says the whole world is hanging on maya, illusion. So take time for you to think, understand, analyze, to gain this realization. Thank you very much. So, wish you very happy, peaceful, prosperous New Year. Thank you. ಸಾಧನಂಗಿಕ ಇದೋ ಜಾತಿ ಸುಖಿತಾಂತು ಜಾತಿಯುಣ್ಯ ಕಾಮೇನ ಮಾಮಿ ಬಾಲಸಮೋಹತಂ ಸಮೋಹ